A while ago, I 3D scanned the gauge cluster for my dad's 1965 GMC, and then I designed and 3D printed a new setup for it. It's a resto mod truck that needed some new gauges. Clearly, they never got in the truck. There are a handful of reasons for this. The design of this was pretty good, but it's not perfect. It doesn't fit into this housing as tightly as I would like. The print quality, as this was printed on a beta unit 3D printer, not that amazing. My glue job of assembling the two halves of the gauge cluster, also not the best. So I need to revisit this a little bit. I'm going to be reprinting this. We're going to be assembling the new setup, putting it into the truck, and we're going to take this 3D printer with us down to North Carolina to work on the GMC and replace some of the smaller 3D printed parts that are on it with better material choices for the long term of that truck. Let's take a closer look at the machine we're going to be taking with us, then we'll get into the Dash project. This is the CookieCAD Voron 0.2, a 3D printer that I recently built on a stream series on my Mandic Labs channel, where I'm going to have a lot more build streams and more tech focused 3D printing videos in the future, including a full breakdown video explaining all the specs of this build and how I'm liking it on the Mandic Labs channel soon, so get subscribed if you're not already over there. For this video, what you need to know is this machine is uniquely suited for what I'm trying to do. It's compact, so it'll be easy to transport to North Carolina to work on the GMC. It is also enclosed, so printing materials like ASA, which is my material of choice for a lot of car parts, is going to work out pretty darn well inside of this enclosure because of the higher temperatures that can be retained inside of there. We'll discuss the material choice more throughout this video. Of course, you're going to be seeing this machine more throughout this video, so let's get moving on to actually working on this project. Now, to get this project done, I'm going to take my background in custom car building and my experience as a 3D printer. All that knowledge I have learned to solve problems on this project. Do you want to learn how to improve your problem solving skills? Well, this week's video sponsor, Brilliant.org, can help you do that. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. I've been using it to sharpen my skills, and it's been a game changer. Instead of just watching videos, you get hands-on problem-solving skills. This method is proven to be six times more effective, plus content is created by experts from top institutions like MIT and Caltech. Whether you're looking to build critical thinking skills or develop a powerful daily learning habit, Brilliant has got you covered. Their lessons are perfect for fitting into a busy schedule, and they're way more engaging than mindless scrolling. Personally, I've been diving into learning a little bit about AI, the large language models that we are seeing pop up all over the place, and I want to learn a little more about them so I don't have to be so frightened about the future and what it holds. Definitely not a robot apocalypse, I hope. I don't know about you, but for me, learning how something works is the number one way Way to demystify it and make me comfortable with it. So if I can learn large language models, at least their basics, I might be a little less afraid for our future. To get started and experience the joy of learning with Brilliant today, follow my link, brilliant.org slash really. With that, you'll get everything they have to offer for free for 30 days, and if you stick with it, you'll get 20% off a premium annual subscription just by following my link, brilliant.org slash really. All right, folks, let's get back to this project. I have to head to North Carolina tomorrow, so I've already printed the new halves of this gauge cluster, but I now have to glue together. For the new pieces, I just increased the outside dimensions of this print because the holes all fit really well with the gauges. The issue was just that it was a little loose in the gauge bezel from the original truck. Now, I printed this in two pieces because I don't have any one machine that has a large enough build volume to print a part this big in high temperature materials like ASA yet. More on a machine that will be able to do that soon. For right now, I have to glue these two halves together and I'm going to use my favorite adhesive that sounds like a sound effect, gloop. There are, of course, a few steps we're going to have to do along the way to get this together properly. On the mating surfaces that are going to be glooped together, there are a couple of holes in here. Those are for some dowel pins I'm going to make out of this aluminum TIG rod, which is a welding rod for welding aluminum. I'll use a couple of cutoff pieces of that rod to act as guide pins to not only help guide the two halves together accurately, but also to strengthen the joint. Before I put those guide pins in though, I'm going to take some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to rough up the mating surfaces so that the gloop and the material have a really good chance to bond together and then the two halves have a good chance to bond together. Lately when I've been gluing or glooping things together, 
it's such a strange verb. I use a old beat up 3D printer bed as a surface that I can work on top of rather than on top of my workbench that I don't necessarily want to have to refinish every other week. So first things first, I'm going to take the gloop and I'm going to apply it to these dowel pins so I can put them into one half of this dash assembly. I'm making sure to get a fair bit of gloop onto these dowel pins so they'll really seat in nicely. Gloop slightly kind of melts the material that it's going into, so they will have a little bit of give going into their holes, and that's what I want. That leaves me with one half of my gauge cluster with four pins sticking out of it, ready to align and be installed into the other half of this equation, the other side of the dashboard which means it's time to assemble these two halves together. Of course, to do this, we're going to apply our gloop to each side of the joint, around the dowel pins on the side that has them, and then, of course, on the face of the one that doesn't. So we can go ahead and push these two together, and I'm going to clamp the two halves together as well to hold them in place so they can adhere and dry securely and firmly against each other. As I said, they do have a bit of a melting effect with the gloop, so they might fuse together a little bit tighter. And I actually did add ever so slightly a bit of thickness to the faces of these joints, anticipating both the sanding and that fusing together in the design. Once the gloop is dry, it's time to install the heat press inserts with a soldering iron so that the hardware has metal threads to thread into and it can be much stronger and more secure for mounting this to the truck. Once that's all done, we're ready to pack up the dash and the V0 with a couple spools of filament and head to North Carolina to work on the truck. Let's go. Now my dad's shop is excellent, however it does not have a good Wi-Fi connection, so I'm going to deploy my barrel travel router so I can easily connect to the printer. I arrived at my dad's shop. Uh, from here on out, I think I'm going to do either voiceover, audio, or talking head back at the studio because the audio in this shop is not good. Yeah. Then I promptly packed the printer back up and came back to the studio because nothing goes right when you're trying to film a video about it. So what happened? Well, I think it was a loose connection. When I got there, set this thing up on the bench and fired it up, it just would not connect to the firmware on the machine. It was just sitting there collecting dust. And unfortunately I had zero spare time while I was there to spend time diagnosing it or figuring out what was going on. So I just put it back in the car and brought it back here to the studio where I unplugged, reseated things, and now it's working perfectly fine. I realize this is probably about a minute of the video that I could have cut out, but honestly, I like to leave the honest truth of the way these projects go in these videos for folks to see that things don't always go perfectly and that sometimes you're gonna run into problems. That said, let's actually keep moving forward with this project now. There are a fair bit of components on this truck that are 3D printed, not just the gauge cluster that I've already shown you. There is an air ride control system mounted in the dashboard that will allow for control of the air ride. That touchpad is inset into a 3D printed component. For the air ride, there's also an air water separator but is using a clamp mount to mount it to the frame rail that is 3D printed. There's a trim piece on the firewall for the Deutsch connector that travels through the firewall, sending some power to lights in the hood. And from front to back on this truck is quite a bit of stainless hardline tubing custom bent for it. And there are clamps all over that that are 3D printed, holding them together so they look nice and neat or two frame rails for solid mounting. This project's been going on for years now, and when I designed and printed the parts for this truck, I only really had an Ender 3, at least that I used on a regular basis, so PETG was the best material choice that I could make at that time. I have moved on from that and realized that it's not the best choice long term. ASA is the material choice moving forward. There's a handful of reasons for this. The environment that this truck is going to exist in on a regular basis, ASA is a pretty solid choice, I think. It is quite UV stable, so when exposed to sunlight, like those dash pieces, they're gonna get sun rays coming through the windows, beating directly on them when sitting at a car show, both heating them up and also exposing them to UV rays that can degrade the material over time. ASA handles that pretty well. 
ASA is going to handle temperatures better than PETG. It has a higher glass transition temperature and softening temperature on average than most PETGs. So those fuel clamps mounted to the frame rails, they're really not going to get exposed to a ton of heat. The exhaust is fairly distant from them, but it's still going to get warm underneath this truck from the exhaust heating up the air underneath of it. And some of those clamps are on the engine. They're on the top of the engine, nowhere near the headers or anything like that. But still, ASA is going to be a better choice for temperature handling on this thing. Nylon might have been a better choice for those clamps at least. It gives a little more, which could be useful when clamping things together tightly so they don't crack as you tighten down on them. It is also higher temperature stable than ASA, but it's also hygroscopic, so moisture from the air really soaks into it and can make it properties of it change, and it's more difficult to print and work with. ASA will allow me to print most of the parts on this truck perfectly fine. And lastly, I do really like printing with Polymaker ASA. I have tuned it into the point where I am very happy with the print results that I get out of it, and I really enjoy this material working with it. It's got a great balance of strength, temperature handling, UV and other environmental exposure characteristics that is going to be pretty darn perfect for this truck and other custom car projects I might take on. So back here in the studio with the Cookie Cad V0 back up and running, it's time to reprint these parts. I may not be in North Carolina with the truck, but I can print them, I can mail them down to my dad, or next time I go to work on the truck, I can take them with me. I jumped into Fusion to take a look at the designs that I created years ago, just to see where they stood versus how I design things today. And I did need to tweak things a little bit, tear dropping holes, adding a chamfer at a steeper angle to the bottom of parts, things like that, that I do to everything I design now, but I didn't then. Then it was simple as warming up the chamber on the printer and sending the parts to be printed. Overall, these turned out great. They are now in a material that I trust more long-term on the truck than I do the material that I chose to use years ago. I was working with what I had the capability and the access to at the time, and there's nothing wrong with that. Honestly, the PETG might have lasted for quite some time on various parts on the truck, but I now have the means to do it better, so I'm going to. I might as well give you a quick demo of how these assemble. You put a 1032 hex nut into the back side of the clamp, and then a 1032 screw through the front side of it. And of course, that then sandwiches the two halves together when you tighten the screw down. You can use a longer screw and drill and tap into a frame rail or use a nut cert to t attach these directly to components so they are rigidly, solidly mounted. In that case, I would take the hex nut out of this configuration and just allow whatever you're going into to sandwich everything together. Though you could leave the hex nut in, it's just not ideal. The reason I explain this is these parts are available for download on my Thangs page. You'll find a link in the description to them. They've been there forever. So if you wanna print some of these for a car project you're working on or something else where you could use these, I've made similar ones for water cooling my computer before. You can find the link in the description. Yet in this video, I had wanted to design and install some turn signals and a check engine light high beam indicator into this gauge cluster. I was going to use translucent PETG in the various colors, green for turn signal, yellow, amber for check engine, and blue for high beam indicators. That's what the four holes around the center gauge are for here. Unfortunately, this whole project just, as you probably noticed, did not go the way I'd hoped it would. That said, I set out to show you how I'm using 3D printing in a custom car build. That is what actually got me in to 3D printing. I was a professional custom car builder and I wanted to be able to prototype and make custom pieces for the vehicles that I was building. And then 3D printing took over my life. I had really hoped to do a few more steps in this process with you folks in this video, but unfortunately every project from here on is a limited time frame for me. I haven't really announced it on here, but we're moving from Philadelphia to Portland, Oregon, completely across the country. So I've got to break down this entire studio, and that means that every project I'm doing from now until the move only has so big of a window per project. So I've got to move on from this one. I hope you did find at least some interesting information in here, some valuable stuff. If you did find this interesting, maybe you'll find the video where I 3D scanned this and originally made the dashboard interesting too. All right, folks, get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See you, folks.